Hi guys, and welcome to the new series, Thunderstorms, written and narrated by Stacy Holt. This series is also another 13 part, just like the other series, Melting. I'm not sure who the artist is, but if anyone knows, just please tag them for me and I'll give them the credit. And as always, please like, subscribe, and if you'd like to leave a comment to support the series, I'd really appreciate it. Now, Chapter 1, Heartache. What to do? She never would have thought that he would be so reckless as to reveal his identity to her. They always joked about it, but she never thought he would take her seriously. Though, he didn't know she knew. Was that even fair? She tried to get home before her transformation, and she saw him detransform in an alley near the bakery. Why was he near her house anyways? She was so careful that he wouldn't figure out her identity, but never would have thought that he was Adrian Agreste, famous fashion designer Gabriel Agreste's son, her classmate, her friend, her crush. This was too much to handle. She could feel her heart beat in her chest as her throat started to tighten. She was holding her breath. She forgot to breathe. Marina inhaled and exhaled, trying to clear her thoughts, but every time she tried to clear her thoughts, Adrian and Cat Noir popped into her head. Was she the one that was reckless? She was the one who found out, not him. Wait, how was she supposed to act around Cat Noir now? She could barely muster a sentence around Adrian, let alone have a full-out Akuma fight and focus on the pressure of saving Paris. This was bad. She sat down in her chair on top of the balcony and huffed, throwing her arm over her eyes to shield them from the summer sun. Marinette? She heard a voice from her bedroom. She leaped up and walked down the ladder to find... Adrian? What was he doing? In her bedroom? How did he get inside? Why was he here? Why did he look calm about it? Did he not know that he had the biggest crush on the century on her? Well, not her. He had a crush on Ladybug. Her heart ached. He didn't love her. He loved the ideal, confident image of her. The superhero inside of her. That she couldn't be in her everyday life. Marinette collected her thoughts and smiled, making sure he didn't see any hints of heartache or sadness. Hey, Marinette. Hey, Adrian. What are you doing here? Marinette said. Eyes darting to not make eye contact. Alia said you needed help with homework. She said she would text you after school to let you know I was coming. Adrian smiled. Alia? Text? There was an Akuma fight right after school. She couldn't get to her phone in time. The timing was awful, but she would admit Alia did always come through for her. Oh, yeah, homework. <laughs> Wait, I left my bag at school! Marinette cried out noticing that her phone and her bag were still in school. She was such in a rush with the Akuma fight that she must have forgotten it. I'm sorry you came all the way over here, but I can't do homework without my bag. Marinette sighed. Adrian stood silent while rubbing the back of his neck. Well, we have that design competition coming up. We don't have any written assignment on that, just a topic. I could help you with that if you'd like. Have you started on it yet? Adrian smiled. Marinette's eyes darted toward him and shook her head. She walked over to her desk and picked up her sketchbook and sat down at the chase. He followed her and sat down beside her. Marinette darted her eyes down toward the sketchbook, knowing that Adrian, the boy she loved, was in her bedroom. Not only that, but he was her partner, who loved Ladybug. The recurring thoughts kept repeating, and with each repeat dug into her heart like a dagger. Those are really cool, Marinette. What topic did you choose to do your design on? he asked, looking at the current page. Marinette sat in silence, still processing the thoughts that ran a mess in her mind. She quickly snapped out of it when he touched her hand. She jumped at his touch and looked over at him. What? Uh, my topic? Well, um, I chose weather, Marinette said softly. Weather? Yeah, like sunlight, wind, rain, snow, and fog. Depending on which type of weather I choose, I can make a design about that certain type. I'm not completely sure if I want that to be my final decision. It is a work in progress, after all. 
Marinette gave a polite smile. That's not a bad idea, actually. I'm excited to see what you're going to create. He smiled back. It wasn't long until Adrian had to leave, and Marinette waved him goodbye. She retreated back to her bedroom, only to climb up to her bed and collapse from the emotional and physical exhaustion from that day. Tiki unclicked her purse and flew over to her, landing beside her head that laid on the pillow. She gave her a sad look and remained quiet, waiting patiently for Marinette to talk when she was ready. Marinette didn't say anything. She grabbed her pillow and blanket and submerged herself within them, like a caterpillar in its cocoon. If she hadn't found out the bitter truth about her partner, she knew she would have been ecstatic about spending the day with Adrian in her room. Tiki frowned as she heard quiet sniffles and crying under the blanket. She didn't know how to comfort her and thought it best to stay quiet. Hours later, she heard a thump on her balcony window and climbed up and unlatched the lock. Down came Cat Noir, a smile on his face. It wasn't unusual for him to come inside late at night and make himself comfortable on her chase. The first few times he had said his life at home was rough, and she imagined him to be poor or homeless, but now she knew he was just a rich model boy from class. Was it not the place that he missed? Was it companionship and friendship he sought when he stayed over? Marinette knew he was always lonely being confined to the house almost all of his life, but never thought he would be so lonely that he would leave his huge mansion-like house to sleep in an upstairs bakery. Marinette had cried out her frustrations and decided to not say anything to him about sleeping there, though she was still a little nervous that her crush was sleeping at her home. She drifted back to sleep after giving him a blanket and pillow to sleep on and turned back off the lights. The next morning came and she found him sleeping on the chase, curled up in blankets. She wondered if it was wrong to wake him or should she let him sleep a few more hours? She went to the bathroom to take a shower and to get ready for school. When she came back, he was gone, though there was a little note stuck to the pillow he slept on next to the folded up blankets. Thank you, princess. Today was a rough day. I'm glad I can always count on you. There was a little paw print and a heart at the bottom where his signature would be, making Marinette give a smile. Marinette, you're going to be late for school, Tiki chimed in. Marinette looked at the time and rushed out of the house, barely making it to class before the last bell. She took her usual seat and reached inside her bag, pulling out her unfinished homework. She quickly fed out the homework before the teacher collected them up. Good thing she didn't really need tutoring for this lesson. She was actually good at art history for a change. Adrian glanced back at her and smiled, though Marinette only waved back, a smile not forming on her face as it normally did. She made it back home without any trouble and actually brought her back home this time. Great, time to do more homework, she groaned. A few hours passed and she needed to stretch her arms and legs, so she went out on the balcony. To her surprise, the sun hadn't quite gone down yet and was peeking over the city like a golden warm ray. The colors of orange, pink, and red scattered through the sky, creating a breathtaking landscape that no camera could capture. She spotted a black silhouette bouncing around the rooftops as the shadow draped beneath it. It was Cat Noir. How much time did Adrian spend as Cat Noir? Did he like being Cat Noir more than being himself? Marinette looked at Tiki who gave her a nod and a smile, telling her it was okay if she wanted to go talk to him. She transformed and zipped her way towards him. He was sitting on a rooftop edge, watching the sunset fall beneath the horizon. The golden rays bouncing off of his blonde curls and reflecting in his green eyes. Ladybug took a seat next to Cat Noir who was extremely surprised to see her there. My lady, is there an Akuma I wasn't aware of? He asked, slight panic in his eyes. No, I needed to talk to you, Ladybug said, keeping her eyes focused on the sunset to avoid his gaze. Talk? She could tell he was confused and a little worried. Who wouldn't be afraid of that sentence? She hated wording it like that, but she needed him to take this seriously. Yesterday, you... She began. I kicked that Akuma's butt. Yeah, I know. Perfectly as always. He smiled, laughing at his own cat joke to break the tension. Yesterday, you were reckless! Ladybug exclaimed, her eyes darting to his to show how serious she was. Reckless? What do you mean? I didn't have a scratch on me. He smiled again. You... You don't understand! Ladybug looked down at her feet not knowing if she should say something or not. Ladybug, you can talk to me. We're partners, he reassured her. We're 
more than partners, she corrected him. His ears flicked at her choice of words that caused him to blush. You love Ladybug, she said with a sigh. He opened his mouth to say something, but Ladybug interrupted him. You don't love the civilian me. She clenched her hands together and crossed her legs, trying her best not to tear up. I love you with or without the mask, my lady, he smiled, putting his hand on her hands. See, this is where you're wrong. Yesterday, I saw you detransform. You don't love me. You love this version of me. Ladybug started to cry and stood up, breaking his hand away from hers. Ladybug, wait! He yelled. She pulled out her yo-yo and zipped away, leaving Cat alone on the rooftop with his thoughts. Ladybug detransformed and landed on her bed. She laid on her bed thinking for a couple of hours until Tiki floated over to Marinette. Tiki sighed as Marinette's tears soaked her pillow. Marinette, he loves you too, you know. He's just blinded by your luck. Tiki smiled, wiping her tears away. My luck? She sniffled. Yes, just how you couldn't see Adrian as Cat Noir until you saw it with your own two eyes. Then why can't he fall in love with this me, the real me? Marinette, you're the same person. The only thing the Miraculous do is boost your fighting skills and abilities. We don't change who you are. Tiki reassured her. Marinette wiped her tears and gave Tiki a hug, caressing her to her cheek. Thanks, Tiki. Marinette smiled. You should talk to him again when you're ready. Maybe this time, explain what all happened and tell him how you really feel, Tiki said. You want me to tell him my identity? No, silly. Confess to Cat Noir that you like him. Tiki smiled. I... I don't like... Well... I like Adrian, so... That means... I like Cat Noir, Marinette said softly, finally clearing enough thought to actually process that she liked Cat Noir then. She had already liked Cat, but she didn't think she liked him the same way as Adrian. Wow, this was news to her. She needed to not only process her new findings of her partner's identity, but she also needed to process her own thoughts and feelings before confronting Cat again. She heard a faint tap on the balcony window and climbed up. Instead of seeing Cat Noir like she normally did, she was greeted with a bunch of rain and storm clouds. As she opened it to see if he was outside, she had let the harsh downfall on herself and had drenched her entire body in a few seconds. Ah! How could it be sunny and bright outside and then a few hours later it's storming this bad? Marinette cried out. Weather is a fickle thing, Tiki laughed. Marinette smiled and flicked water on Tiki who screamed out while giggling. They chased each other around the room until somehow another thump was heard above them, but this time was louder. That couldn't be Cat, would it? In this kind of weather? Surely he knows better than to stay in rain for this long. He could get sick. She climbed back up and unlatched the door, poking her head out just enough to see. She didn't open it all the way this time so the water wouldn't pour down on her. She saw a dark ball shape sitting on the balcony chair and opened the little door just a little more to let the light out. Cat! Marinette screamed. Get in here now! You're getting soaked! Cat walked in and sat down on the floor, leaving a little rain puddle beneath him. Something was off. He was quiet and didn't speak. Even his walk was different. Usually he would prance around happily, but now? He was walking slowly, with no emotion at all. Could her talk with him as Ladybug do this? Was she too harsh on him? She knew she shouldn't have yelled at him, because he was unaware of any of this, but still, it hurt to know he only loved one half of her. Marinette grabbed two towels from the bathroom and wrapped one around his torso and threw the other on top of his head. There, dry up, kitty. Marinette smiled, trying to act her usual self. She took hold of the towel and rubbed it around his head, making his hair fluffier than he probably would have liked, but he remained quiet. Are you okay? She asked. Cat looked up at her. His eyes were sad and melancholic. He stood up and walked towards her, making Marinette flustered. He wrapped his arms around her waist and rested his hand on top of her shoulders, pulling her in close. She could feel his body tighten as if he were trying his hardest to hold his emotions inside. She heard him. 
She didn't mean to, but she heard him. Marinette closed her eyes and wrapped her arms around him, feeling a tear or two slide down her own cheeks. This was all she ever wanted. She wanted his affection. She yearned for his touch. She loved everything about him. Can I stay here again? He asked in a low voice. Tonight is Friday night, so yes. You don't have to leave so early in the morning, you know. We always make breakfast in the morning. Marinette smiled, feeling his shaken breath in her ear. He leaned out and gave her a nod, letting go of her in the process. That was it? He acted fine now? Was he pretending everything was fine? Was that what he did as Adrian? Cat, where did you put the pillow? He interrupted her. Her eyes darted to her bed, and her face went white. Oh, nowhere! I'll go get you a fresh pillow! Marinette squeaked, trying to climb to her bed to hide the pillow. But Cat jumped up to her bed before she could get to it. His eyes focused on the pillow he slept on, and it matched the rest of her bedspread, but was taken aback when he saw there was a wet stain on it. Were you crying? He asked. She swallowed and played with her fingertips awkwardly. Guess we both had a rough day, he chuckled. I'll make us some hot chocolate. You finish drying off, Marinette smiled. A few minutes later, and Marinette returned with two hot chocolates. He sat down on the chase in his usual spot, and she sat beside him, giving him a cup. They both took a few sips in silence, but it was a warm silence. A silence that they both knew wasn't awkward or sad. It was comforting. So, why were you just sitting in the rain? I had a fight, I think, with Ladybug. I don't know what I did to make her so upset, but... She ran away crying. After that, I went home and things just got worse. That's why I came here. I'm always happy here. I just needed some happiness on this terrible day. He said, smiling at his chocolate reflection. Why were you crying, princess? Princess. She loved that nickname that he gave her. Though now, knowing it was Adrian, it did sound a little weird. How could he call her that and say all these things and still just be friends at school? Just a stressful day, Marinette sighed, feeling it would be best to not ruin any more of his day. Cat? She asked. Her eyes darted down to her feet as she took another sip. He turned his head to look at her. Would you like to watch a movie with me while we fall asleep? She asked, pink starting to resonate on her cheeks. A movie? Um, sure. He smiled, putting his now empty cup down on the side table. Marinette fiddled with her feet as she sipped the remaining of her hot chocolate. I only have my laptop with me, so would you be okay with laying in my bed with me? Marinette's eyes turned to him, her face bright red. In your bed? He asked. She saw his face starting to turn red. It, it's okay if you don't. We can always make a pillow and blanket for it on the floor, or we could watch it on the chase, she stammered. He looked at the floor, and then to the chase. The floor wouldn't be that comfortable, and it would be a little cold. The chase would be better than the floor, though they would be a little too close for comfort on the chase for a movie. She would basically have to lean on his chest while they watched to fit. No, it's alright. You grab the laptop, and I'll grab all the blankets and pillows I can find. We will make this the happiest bed sleepover ever. Cat gave a slight chuckle. Marinette laughed and nodded. She grabbed her laptop and climbed up to her bed. She laid on her stomach and put the laptop in front of her. Her hands holding her head propped up. Cat jumped up after clicking the lights off and pouring all of the blankets he found on top of her, hearing her giggle underneath. She threw some blankets on top of him once he laid down beside her, watching his face turn into a laugh. After they were comfortable in their new homes for the night, Marinette clicked open Netflix and went to comedy, thinking after the rough day they had, they both needed it. What about that one? Cat said, pointing to a movie thumbnail. Cat, that's a comedy romance, Marinette giggled. You don't like them? I would say I'm pretty good in the love department, he chuckled, wiggling his eyebrows teasingly. Ugh, fine cat boy, if we fall asleep before the comedy, you are buying dinner, Marinette laughed. They both laughed and pressed the play button. As the movie progressed, 
so did their drowsiness. Marinette could feel her head become heavier with every passing minute. She yawned and turned toward Cat Noir, who was struggling to stay awake as well. He turned to look at Marinette and found themselves inches away from one another. Marinette's eyes went from Cat's eyes down to his lips as her mind went blank. Flashes of aging popped into her head, making her turn back to the screen blushing. Cat Noir turned back to the movie, a little flustered as well. Just as they both turned their eyes to the screen, the movie went dark, as well as the streetlights outside, followed by a crack of thunder. Marinette heard Cat yell out in panic when everything turned pitch black. Are you alright, Cat Noir? J just fine. Don't worry about me. I'll protect you, princess, she heard him say in the dark, though she couldn't see him. She felt something warm touch her shoulder. He was leaning on her. She felt him shake every time the thunder cracked. Was he afraid of storms? He didn't flinch when stormy weather was tossing lightning around him. Lightning zipped across the sky and revealed for half of a second that he wore a terrified face full of worry. Are you afraid of thunderstorms? Marinette asked. She felt him nudge closer with another shock of thunder, ringing in their ears like surround sound. Huh. Adrian was afraid of thunderstorms. This was news to her. Marinette took a breath in and wrapped her arm around his waist, leaning her head against his. Her face was hot and could have sworn that he tensed up when she hugged him. Marinette, are you afraid of thunderstorms? She heard him ask in the darkness. No, but I can tell you are. How come you're afraid of them? Terrible things happen during thunderstorms. I know from experience. She felt him adjust himself and felt him leaning more into her. Marinette closed her eyes and let a soft smile form. She was comforting her partner, her friend, her crush. The light flickered and all of a sudden the screen clicked on, causing them to squint their eyes to see. Marinette saw that the power had come back on and seen their movie was over now. She looked down at Cat Noir and noticed that he was on his back, staring up at her. She thought he was still in his stomach, but must have shifted around in the dark. His face was a few inches away from her, and she still had her arms wrapped around his sides, almost in an embrace. A bright red blush spread across his face beneath his mask as his mouth opened slightly from disbelief from how they were positioned. Marinette swallowed, feeling as if time had been slowed. She could see her reflection in his bright green eyes and closed her eyes, leaning toward him. Cat Noir closed his eyes in panic and felt her touch his cheek. His eyes shot open and looked at her. Marinette gave him a smile and pushed him away from her playfully. She had kissed his cheek. Come on, we should probably go to sleep. Marinette laughed, getting ready to close her laptop. Wait. He took hold of her arm to stop her from closing it. Marinette turned her head to look at him. There it was again. There was fear and worry in his eyes. She didn't realize how much pain and hurt Adrian had to endure every day. Can I sleep here? He asked, darting his eyes away from embarrassment. Marinette stared at him, completely taken aback by his question. Today was so terrible, and having you here makes it better. I, I don't want to let you go yet. Cat closed his eyes, feeling as if Marinette would start to laugh at him. Instead, she smiled and laid in her bed the right way, pushing her feet onto the blankets. Marinette patted the spot beside her and smiled, seeing him look at her surprised. Cat smiled as he let out a huff of excitement, climbing under the blankets beside her. What was she doing? Was she only letting him do this out of guilt? Was she doing this because under the mask she knew who he was? Was she doing this just for her self-gain? She couldn't tell, but she knew that right now he was Cat Noir, and she trusted him more than anyone else in the world. She didn't have the willpower to force herself to see Adrian as Cat Noir. She wanted to push that thought as far out of her mind as possible and act like she did before she knew. She had always allowed him to come over and speak his mind about anything without judgment. She treated him like a brother. She treated him like her best friend. She treated him like a loved one. Marinette turned to lay on her side facing him, watching him get comfy. She giggled silently to herself as he adjusted himself and all of the stuffed animals that she had around the top of her bed. After he was laying down, now comfortable, he looked at her and saw her staring at him. Thanks, Marinette. He smiled. No problem, Cat. You're family. Those words seemed to have hit hard for him as a huge smile formed on his face. But 
turned into a frown, forcing back tears once again. He turned away from her to hide his face. What should she do? She knew he was upset, but he couldn't be that upset about what she had said about earlier. There must have been something else on his mind that she didn't know. Marinette closed her eyes and wrapped her arms around his waist, pulling him close and holding him tightly to let him know that she cared. Cat, you can tell me what is wrong, Marinette said in a soft tone. It's nothing, really. Just... I've never known what a real family felt like. You're the closest family to me that treats me so nice. My family doesn't even treat me like I exist sometimes, he said. That's right. Gabriel Agrest, his father, never made time for him. He was always alone. That is why he wanted to go to school in the first place, to make new connections. Cat, know that you are my family. You always will be, Marinette said, feeling him starting to turn towards her. He faced her, seeing her bluebell eyes in the dark. Her arms still wrapped around his waist. He wrapped his arms around her in return. She could tell he was nervous from the shallow breaths he was taking and felt him pull her closer to him. She felt a soft touch of skin touch her lips, and she realized he was kissing her. Cat Noir had pulled her toward him, and he was kissing her. Oh no, this complicates everything. Though, it felt like sweet relief. She closed her eyes and kissed him back. They parted their lips a few seconds later to see each other's faces bright red. Their hearts were beating out of their chests like a drum, but all they could do was laugh at one another while smiling. She felt him pull her close to him, letting her head lay under his. She pulled her hands to her chest and closed her eyes, feeling his arms wrap around her like a comforting blanket. She felt his breathing steady after a few minutes and realized he had fallen asleep. She smiled, feeling that maybe he did like her as Adrian, but was too afraid to do it. But as Cat Noir, he could hide behind the mask. Maybe she was wrong. She soon drifted to sleep thinking about how everything was changing. Everything that happened that day seemed to be terrible. But once she thought about it, it was a good thing. Yeah. Knowing who he was under the mask made things clearer. She could see all sides of him and fall in love with him all over again. But that wouldn't happen overnight. He opened his eyes to see Marinette still sleeping soundly in his arms. He took a few seconds to recollect his thoughts and what had happened that night. He had crossed a line, a line that he didn't know if he should take back or a line that he was glad that he crossed. He kissed her. She kissed him back. She didn't push him away. She actually kissed him back. He watched as Marinette's back rose and fell with each breath she took. She smelled like rain and rose petals, making him smile as he breathed her scent in. He knew she wanted him to stay for breakfast, but he couldn't tell her that he had photo shoots as Adrian today. He couldn't tell her who he was. It would complicate things. He should tell her that dating a superhero wouldn't work. If Hawk Moth learned of his newly acquired feelings for her, he would surely take it out on her, and he didn't want that. He couldn't just confess his feelings for her as Adrian either, because it was clear she had feelings for Cat Noir. This was a mess. He slowly and quietly escaped from her bedroom, not having the courage to tell her goodbye. It was Saturday. He had a couple of hours of photo shoots and piano practice. He would come back tonight, but before that, he would see if he could find Ladybug and figure out what had happened to her. Her words echoed through his mind. He knew her in real life, and she thought he didn't love her. Wait, that's right. He's in love with Ladybug. How could he kiss Marinette? He didn't know which was worse. The fact that he thought he loved Ladybug and kissed someone else, or the fact that he kissed Marinette, a civilian, knowing she would get caught in the crossfire. The photo shoot was long and boring as usual, which gave him plenty of time to collect his thoughts and feelings, but... When he was done, he still had no idea how to confront Ladybug about what happened. He transformed and went back to the same place that he saw her the night before and waited, hoping she would show up. To his surprise though, he only had to wait about five minutes. She sat down beside him, obviously uncomfortable. Hey, LB. Hey, cat, she said, giving him a half smile, holding one of her arms. 
you going to tell me what happened yesterday? He looked at her with his best serious face he could muster. Yesterday? She said as if she were confused. You said you saw me de-transform. Is my civilian self so bad? Do you not like my other self? You have to tell me. You ran away crying. Why? He said, his eyes glued to hers. As much as she wanted to avoid his stare, she remained in his gaze, seeing her reflection in those bright emerald eyes like she did last night. Cat, I was hurt because I thought you didn't love the other side of me. You said you loved me to my mask, but you've never said it to the face without the mask. She was hurt. He knew that, but how was he supposed to love someone he didn't know under the mask? That was like picking a needle in a haystack. How many people lived in Paris again? Right. A lot. Wait. She said they were more than partners. What did she mean by that? LB, you said we were more than partners. What did you mean? He asked, observing her reaction. Well, I shouldn't say much. The rules have already been half broken. If you were to know my identity, we could have our miraculous taken away. But I know you in real life. I know your civilian self personally, she said, her cheeks pink. Was she blushing? Wait, hold on. She knew him in real life. Did he see her every day? How? How had he not recognized her? Wait, slow down. Do we know one another? Are we acquaintances? Are we friends? Are we- Cat, I gave you a big hint, but I can't tell you who I am. You either have to figure it out and keep it to yourself, or you can forget about it. Either way, right now, <laughs> I'm a lot happier. Ladybug smiled, turning her head toward the Eiffel Tower. Her pigtail swayed in the Paris summer breeze. Why was his heart thumping? It felt as though his voice was stuck in his throat. Was he nervous or excited? He desperately wanted to know who she was. Marinette. Images of Marinette would pop into his mind and he felt guilty. How could he make such a mistake when he was so close to figuring out who his true love was? He needed to break it off with Marinette as peaceful as possible and explain that the superhero life was just too dangerous. <sighs> yeah. Marinette was understanding. She would understand. What? Marinette cried out. I don't think we should continue what we started last night. What if Hawk Moth found out? That would put you in danger and I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if he hurt you because of me, Cat said, his ears drooping. Marinette clenched her fist and bit her lips, wanting to tell him badly but took a deep breath. You're... you're right, Marinette sighed, thinking it better this way, even though she desperately wanted to continue this... relationship? Whatever they were. He looked at her, sitting at her desk, obviously hiding the disappointment from him. He hated this. He hated hurting her, but it was the right thing to do, right? He was doing this for Marinette. He wasn't doing this because of the information Ladybug had given him, right? I'll see myself out then, he said, turning to go toward the balcony ladder above her bed. Cat? He turned to look at her, seeing her smile at him. Come visit me when there's a thunderstorm? Marinette smiled, her cheeks stained pink. It hurt him deep down. He wanted to. He really did. It was one of the best nights that he could remember so clearly, yet he didn't want it to end how it did last time. He wanted to say no to her, but he was also torn because he didn't want her to be upset. We'll see, princess. That was the best answer he could give. He turned and left without another word, disappearing into the night like a black cat in the night. Three days went by, and Adrian seemed to be fine. He treated her how he always did, friendly. She changed, however. She wasn't as nervous around him. She didn't idolize him. She knew he was human as she was. He had his own flaws. He was afraid of thunderstorms as she was afraid of him knowing her true identity. She understood his reasoning behind his actions, though it still hurt regardless. 
Adrian walked into the hallway and saw Marinette still sitting in class by herself, even though the bell had rung 15 minutes before. He thought it strange, but figured she was upset about the conversation with her and Cat Noir. He walked in and sat down beside her. Instead of freaking out that he was sitting beside her, she looked over at him and he could tell she was forcing a fake smile. How much was she forcing? Was she always forcing herself to be happy and pretend? When was she really happy? Was Cat Noir the only one that could really see her happy? She always acted comfortable and confident around him, but seemed to be different around everyone else. Are you okay, Marinette? He asked. I'm fine, Adrian. I thought you left already. Don't you have Chinese lessons this afternoon? She asked. She knew he had Chinese today? Did he tell her or something? Weird. Yeah, I was supposed to, but they were rescheduled. He smiled. She didn't say anything. She remained quiet and distant. Um, well, would you like to- I have to go, Adrian. I'll see you around, Marinette said, picking her things up and leaving. Marinette, wait, did I do something to make you mad at me? He asked, seeing her eyes widen at the accusation. You, she thought for a moment. You didn't do anything wrong. I just have a lot on my mind. Marinette smiled, waving and left. Plague, why is this so complicated? Adrian groaned. Plague flew out of his pocket and shrugged, keeping quiet about the entire situation. He knew if he said anything to Adrian that Tiki would not be happy. Later that day, he snuck into Marinette's room. Marinette was sitting at her desk, working on her weather designs for the upcoming fashion show, unaware that he was there. Cat Noir was going to scare her, to give her a good laugh as well as himself, but decided to stand and look at her for a few seconds. But something caught his eyes. As he climbed down off the ladder and landed on her bed, he saw a poster board that was sticking out from under her mattress. He took hold of it and pulled it out, revealing a picture poster board of her friends, her and Adrian. A lot of Adrian, including hearts. Did Marinette have a crush on Adrian? If that was the case, why did she act so cold to him today? Wait, if she had a crush on him, what about Cat Noir? Well, also him, but still. She kissed him back as Cat Noir. Was her crush on Adrian not that strong? Wait, what was he saying? He had a crush on Ladybug and he still kissed Marinette. Kiss. Why did his heart flutter at the thought of kissing her again? He stuffed the poster board back into the mattress and jumped down on the ground behind Marinette. He looked over her shoulder and was about to grab her shoulders for a scare, but noticed her designs. Her fashion show weather designs were a light gray jacket that faded to a dark black as if an ombre effect. The drawing held a black umbrella, but the grip was a raindrop. The girls she drew were white leggings with black lightning extending down the thighs. The design was amazing though, and she seemed a little dark. Was that how she felt? Was she still upset? She always perked up around him as Cat Noir, so maybe she'll be happy if he was there. Wait, was she pretending to be fine around him? He needed to find out. Hey, Mari, he smiled, seeing her turn around at the sound of his voice. Hey, Kitty, she smiled, putting her sketchbook on the table. What are you up to? Fashion design ideas. Can I see? He smiled. Sure, she said, handing him her sketchbook. He instantly flipped to the page that he was looking at over her shoulder and pointed to it. This drawing. Oh, yeah, it's for an upcoming fashion show. I picked weather. Marinette smiled nervously. It's about thunder and lightning? He asked, looking up at her. Her eyes widened and snatched the sketchbook out of his hands and shook her head. I have a few others. I was going through the list of types of weather, this one just sparked my creative interests," Marinette said, looking away from him. Marinette, I know you're upset with me and I understand why, but believe me, I really like you, I just don't want you getting hurt," he said, feeling awkward. You like me? I thought you liked Ladybug, she said, her voice almost a whisper. Ladybug? I do. I, I like you too, though. He laughed awkwardly, thinking she thought he didn't like her, but 
He realized that he sounded like a flirt that couldn't make up his mind and groaned. Cat. She could see he was a mess. Marinette stood up and walked over and hugged him. Cat stood there frozen, feeling her arms around him. Why would she hug him after hurting her? Why would she show him compassion? Why would she treat him kindly after kissing her, then basically telling her that it was a regret? <laughs> you are such an idiot sometimes, Kitty. Marinette laughed. Cat smiled and wrapped his arms around her and gave a soft chuckle, almost agreeing to her statement. When you catch Hawk Moth, she said, leaning out to look at him. He looked down at her, her eyes smiling at him. This was no fake smile. He knew she was truly happy with him, which hurt more. When I catch Hawk Moth, then what? He said, feeling his throat tighten. Then I will tell you all of my secrets, she smiled. Seeing him slightly confused and for good reason. Secrets, huh? Like the poster board under your mattress? Cat laughed, giving her a Cheshire smile. He watched as her smug smile turned into a flustered panic. Wait, what? You saw that? How? She screamed. She tried to get away from his grasp to go to her secret stash of pictures, but Cat kept her glued to the spot. It's okay, princess. Do you have a crush on him or something? He laughed. I did. Well, do. It's complicated. Marinette looked away. I thought you liked me. Cat laughed. I thought you liked Ladybug. Marinette booped his nose teasingly. He looked down at her, an overwhelming feeling in his chest again. His mind was going blank again. This was bad. Get a hold of yourself. Don't be reckless. He took a deep breath and leaned down toward her. Marinette blinked slowly and felt her cheeks burn as she stood up on her tippy toes and wrapped her arms around his neck. He kissed her slowly and felt his heart beating. The hot warmth she was breathing on his face from her nose as she kissed him back lingered on his skin. She ran her fingers through his hair and suddenly pulled away. This wasn't right. She should have stopped this before it started. She made a promise. She couldn't let him in. Cat released her as she took a few steps backward, her hand flying to her lips. I'm, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have- Cat, it's okay. We know how the other feels, I think, Marinette said. I think you should date someone else. We need to end this, Cat said, clenching his fists, mentally disagreeing but stood his ground. Who- Adrian, your crush. Go date him, not me, he said, turning around to leave. Marinette ran toward him and grabbed his tail that brought him to a halt. Cat, I like you. I like him the same, but you're the same person. I love you both equally. I've always loved you both because I'm Ladybug. She wanted to scream out, but she stood quiet. He turned his head around and saw her eyes filling with tears. Her mouth opened like she wanted to tell him what was hurting her, but, but couldn't bring herself to do so. Princess? Don't leave, please, Adrian. His eyes shot open. Her eyes overfilled with tears streaming down her cheeks as her eyes widened as well, realizing what she had said. What did you call me? He said, turning around to fully face her. Marinette let go of his tail and let her hands drop to her sides as her tears overflowed, falling onto the floor. Marinette, what did you call me? He repeated. Not calling me princess anymore? She said. Tell me, did you call me? Adrian, I called you Adrian, she screamed out, seeing his face change from confusion to surprise. Why did you call me that? You're not denying it. I saw you. When you came here a few days ago to do homework, I was on my balcony and saw you, she said, trying to keep her emotions in check enough to give him at least the half-truth. Yes, it was true she saw him, but she needed to keep her identity a secret. So you saw me and are just now saying something? You acted so cold to me at school today. Why treat me so differently in person than now? He snapped. I wanted to keep it to myself. I didn't want you to know that I knew. I thought you wouldn't speak to me again or you would have to give up your miraculous, Marinette said, her voice going from loud to quiet. 
Kat stood there, unable to think or react to what he learned. So she let him kiss her, knowing who he was? He kissed her and she let him only because she knew he was Adrian? She didn't like him as Cat Noir, but only after she learned he was Adrian Agrest. So you only like me because I'm Adrian? You don't like Cat Noir? Cat said, his fist clenched. Cat, no, I love both sides of you, Marinette blurted out, her face turning red as she closed her eyes in protest. I'll see you later, Marinette. I need to do some thinking, he said, jumping up on her bed and out of the opening toward her balcony. Marinette groaned and sat down on her chase, letting out a sigh. Why don't you go see him as Ladybug? Tiki said. He doesn't know it's me, though. You could make him feel better and maybe sort through his feelings a little as his partner and trusted friend. Tiki smiled. Marinette sighed, knowing that he didn't have anyone to talk to besides Plag, and from what Tiki had told her, Plag wasn't really a good supporter about this type of stuff. Marinette transformed and ran across the rooftops toward Adrian's home. Peering in, she took a deep breath and opened the window, not seeing him anywhere. She stepped inside and looked around. Everything was clean and organized. She heard a voice from behind her and turned around to see Cat Noir jumping inside his own home. Ladybug? What are you doing here? He said, confused. I wanted to check in on you. Check in? Why? His ring beeped and he transformed back into Adrian. His eyes widened but realized she already knew who he was. She confirmed it on the rooftop. I saw you on the rooftop as Cat Noir. It's okay, Adrian. I already know who you are. She said it with a smile. There is a complication. Marinette saw me de-transform the same day you did, Adrian said, rubbing the back of his neck, turning away from her gaze. It's all right, Kitty. I saw Marinette that same day, and we had a good long talk about it. She promised she wouldn't say anything to anyone. Wait, did she tell you she knew? Ladybug asked, trying to seem a little surprised. Oh, uh, no, she just has been acting a little differently around me is all. I just assumed she knew or something. He laughed nervously. So that was it. That is why Marinette didn't tell him she knew from the start. She made a promise with Ladybug and tried to keep it. Well, since there isn't anything to check in about, I'll see you later then, Adrian, she said, pulling out her yo-yo. Wait, will you give me another hint, please? He asked. Another hint? She paused to think. I'll be at the fashion show this Friday, Ladybug smiled, throwing her yo-yo and zipping away. The fashion show Friday, huh? What's today? Adrian pulled out his phone and saw that today was Tuesday and also saw that Marinette had texted him a couple of times, about 20 minutes ago. Adrian sighed and sat down on his bed, hearing a knock at his bedroom door. Yes? Dinner is ready, Adrian. He could hear Natalie from the other side walk away, but he wasn't hungry. He looked down at his phone in his hand and opened the text. He typed a message to Marinette and left to go eat dinner, leaving his phone on the bed. Can we talk tomorrow after school? His text read, Marinette read it a few seconds later, but didn't respond. It was Wednesday morning, and their classes were canceled to allow the students to work on their designs for the fashion show. Marinette woke up and received the text from Ollie and smiled, pulling out her sewing machine to start making it. She could get it done in time, right? She may have to pull an all-nighter, but she had this. She just couldn't get distracted. Well, that's what she thought until Cat Noir jumped into her bedroom. Hey, Marinette. I came here since classes were canceled. He smiled, sitting down on her bed, looking at her from afar. Marinette turned around and smiled, but returned back to her designs. Are you busy? He said, looking at the poster board that was now hung beside her bed instead of under her mattress. This time, however, it wasn't covered in pictures of Adrian. It was her and her friends and group photos that just so happened to have Adrian in them. There were no single photos of Adrian anymore. What happened to all the pictures I saw last time? He asked. Are you upset that you're not on there? Marinette turned her head and smirked, seeing Cat and Noir a little flustered. N no, that's not what I meant. I meant that you just trashed them? Are you mad at me? He said, jumping off of her bed and walking over to her, leaning on her chair to see what she was working on. It's alright, Cat. I'm not mad. 
I thought you were mad at me when you left, Marinette said, not taking her eyes off of her designs that she was sewing together. I needed time to think. Why didn't you tell me you made a promise to Ladybug then? He said, sighing, putting his hand on hers to make her stop sewing. Marinette sighed and twirled around in her chair to face him. I didn't see the point in telling you about it because it didn't matter. I broke that promise so it wasn't really a promise anymore. Marinette sighed. Do you still like me? Marinette turned to face him, mouth open, eyes wide with surprise. Her cheeks started to burn as she looked at him. Her face was serious though, flushed all the same. He was nervous to hear her answer. Marinette stood frozen, unable to think of how to respond. She had always wanted to date him, but would right now be the best time? She knows he still loves Ladybug, and it would feel like lying. She didn't want to start dating him, and the beginning was a lie. I do, but I'm really stressed out about the fashion show Friday. I'm not even halfway done, and I only have two days left, Marinette sighed. Is that what you're working on? He asked, sitting down on the chase. Marinette nodded. Would you want to help me? Marinette smiled. Kat laughed and nodded, seeing her bring over her sketchbook to write down more information and feedback. During the fashion show, you're going to be modeling them, right? She asked, sitting beside him, scribbling. Yeah, as long as there aren't any feathers, he laughed. Do you want me to wear your designs? I get to pick one person to model for. There aren't any feathers this time, but I do need your measurements if you're offering, Marinette laughed. The day went on like any other, flirtations and banter back and forth as they worked on Marinette's designs until she fell asleep on her table halfway through the night. Cat picked her up and placed her in her bed, smiling as he left for the night. He was happy. He was glad that Marinette found out. He didn't feel like he had to lie to her anymore. He jumped up on the balcony and leaned against the railing, overlooking the city. Two days. Two days until he would see Ladybug at the fashion show. Who was she? He wanted answers. He knew her in real life, huh? He heard the ringing of the bells in the distance and pulled out his staff to check the time. It was well after 2 a.m. and he groaned as he remembered he had school the next morning. He quickly made his way back home, only to wake up a few hours later. Adrian, are you feeling all right? Marinette asked. Adrian turned around and she could see he had bags under his eyes. I'm fine. I just stayed up a little too late last night, he smiled. What time did you go to sleep? Marinette asked, concerned. Girl, you're stepping up your game. You're having a real conversation with Adrian. Alia whispered in her ear. Marinette giggled and nodded. How could Alia know that they've already kissed? That he spent the night with her? What should she say? How should she act? She didn't know how to act around him. I think I laid down in my bed around 3 a.m.? Adrian laughed awkwardly. 3 a.m.? What were you doing? Nino asked, concerned. Adrian looked over at Marinette, whose face was bright red, and his face matched when he looked back at Nina. Wait, no. Don't tell me you two were together all night, Alia said. No, of course not. Marinette shook her head, laughing at the very thought. No, we weren't. I was watching videos on my phone and lost track of time. I was also working on some homework, Adrian smiled. Which wasn't a lie. He was helping Marinette with her homework as Cat Noir and did lose track of time. He also texted Marinette goodnight, so he technically was truthful. Why don't we all go do something together tonight then? I know it's a Thursday night, but it's the night before the fashion show. Why not take off some stress? Alia smiled, nudging Marinette in the shoulder with her own. Marinette thought for a moment, trying to think if she had enough time to finish her designs if she did go out with him. Marinette sighed and shook her head. Sorry, Alia, I'm barely halfway done with sewing everything together and perfecting them. Adrian took out his phone and acted as if he were texting his father, but Marinette felt her phone buzz. She looked at it and noticed that Adrian had texted her saying, I can help you catch up tonight. Come on, it'll be fun. Marinette looked at him, smiling at her, and she smiled back. Are you sure? You've been working really hard lately, Alia said, turning to Nina. Well, 
I guess I could go out for a little. Not too late, though. Marinette smiled. Alia, Nino, and Adrian smiled at one another, agreeing to meet each other around 4.15 after school today at the Rue de Paris. Marinette took out her sketchbook and started a sketch while the teacher started class. Everything was normal until an Akuma appeared near the end of class. Everyone fled the school in safety. Though, instead of running away with an excuse, Adrian helped Marinette find a hiding place. Adrian, why aren't you going to fight it? Marinette said as he shoved her inside of a locker. I want to make sure you'll be safe. Stay here and I'll come back for you after. Adrian smiled. Leaning in to give her a kiss on the cheek and smiling, he shut the locker and left without another thought. Marinette's cheek blushed red, but soon snapped out of it when she heard another crash of the nearby Akuma victim. Tiki, spots on! Cat Noir watched as Ladybug flawlessly zipped in and tripped the Akuma victim with her yo-yo, landing perfectly on her feet as she smiled. Cat Noir smiled and nodded to her. They didn't have to speak to one another about what the other was doing. They knew their fighting pattern better than anyone else and trusted one another completely. The Akuma victim was a lot stronger than they had imagined and struggled to figure out how to beat them. Ladybug and Cat Noir hid behind a car to recollect their plan, but Cat Noir had other plans. So, how do I know you, my lady? Cat smiled. Cat! Right now is not the time, Ladybug groaned. Just as she yelled at him, she was hit with the victim's attack and went flying into a nearby building. Ladybug, Cat called out, running to her. She was laying on the ground, disoriented from the impact. Cat, the staff, Ladybug said softly, feeling as if she had the breath knocked out of her. She handed him her lucky charm, which was a piece of gum, and he stuck it in his mouth. He turned around and ran toward the Akuma victim and spit the gum at the victim, who caught it with the other hand, thinking it was an attack, only to find it was a sticky piece of gum. As they were trying to get the gum off of their free hand, Ladybug could hear him yell cataclysm. Ladybug finally caught her breath and zipped over to him, seeing the victim was back to normal. Ladybug fist bumped Cat Noir. He was smiling though, she didn't seem happy. Ladybug picked up the half piece of chewed gum and threw it into the air as she yelled miraculous ladybug to restore things back to normal. What's wrong, LB? Cat asked, seeing her earlier cheerful self vanished. Meet me tonight on the roof where you gave me the rose. Take him back? Ladybug said. Cat nodded and helped him up, disappearing into the distance. Ladybug zipped her way back to the school and jumped back inside the locker, gripping her side in pain. Tiki flew out to look and gave her a frown. You have to be careful, Marinette. Plaid gives Cat Noir enough power to take the hits. I don't. I give you luck so you won't get hit. Any hits as strong as that one can cause you pain. Tiki frowned, feeling guilty that she couldn't protect her friend. I know, Tiki. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Marinette smiled, but sat down in the locker as she tried to let the pain subside on its own. A few minutes she heard hurried footsteps coming closer and a bright light shined in her eyes. Are you okay, Marinette? Adrian said, helping her up. Oh, yeah. Totally fine. I just sat down because I didn't know when you'd be back. Marinette lied, feeling it best not to tell him that she was actually hurt. What time is it? Oh, it's 4.10. We better go meet them, Adrian said, looking at his phone. Adrian opened his car door and went inside the back seat with her and asked his bodyguard to take them to their destination. On the car ride there, they were both silent, even though the bodyguard couldn't hear them because the window inside was rolled up. Uh, Marinette? Yeah? Marinette said, trying to push her pain to the side and smile. Are you sure you're okay with going? I'll help you tonight, but you're just really quiet, Adrian said, feeling a little guilty. Oh no, it's fine. I always wanted to go on a date with you, Marinette said with a blush, spreading on her cheeks. A uh, date? This is a date? Adrian asked. Uh, it doesn't have to be, Marinette stuttered, feeling as if she misunderstood the situation. No, no, I like it. It's a date. Adrian smiled. Adrian shifted closer towards her and took hold of her hand and smiled down at her. Marinette smiled back and leaned her head on his shoulder until they both arrived at their destination. Adrian helped Marinette out of the cart and met with Ollie and Nina. They went on a few rides and got some ice cream, as well as watched the sunset begin to set, when Adrian remembered what Ladybug had said to him. 
I have to go, you guys, Adrian said. One more, Alia said, pointing to the Ferris wheel, hinting to Adrian that him and Marinette could go on it together. Uh, Marinette, would you want to ride the Ferris wheel with me? Adrian said, his eyes meeting hers. Uh, yeah, sure, Marinette said politely, even though she wanted this magical date to go home and cry into a pillow because of the pain from her side. Adrian took her hand and led her to the Ferris wheel, helping her step into it with a smile. He sat down beside her and looked at the distant landscape that seemed to have been painted by every color of the rainbow. Adrian swallowed and pulled Marinette closer. She looked up at him, eyes wide with surprise. Want to pretend there's a thunderstorm? Adrian smiled, blushing. Marinette giggled and saw him leaning down to meet her. She closed her eyes and was going to kiss him back, but jumped back in pain. What's wrong? Adrian asked, pulling his hands away from her sides. No, nothing Did I hurt you? I just touched your side. Is your side hurt? Adrian asked, scooting toward her with confusion. No, really, it's nothing, Adrian. Marinette squealed, trying to get away from his touch. Marinette, stop, he said in a serious and almost angry tone, causing Marinette to instantly stop from fear of causing him to be upset with her. He lightly touched her side and saw her flinch. Can, can I lift your shirt up? Only to see where you're hurt, he panicked. Marinette slowly nodded and lifted her shirt up to reveal an enormous black and purple bruise on the side of her stomach. Marinette, how did you get that? What happened? He asked. Before she could answer, the door to the ferris wheel opened and revealed Nino and Alia waving at them with smiles on their faces. Marinette shoved her shirt down before they could notice and stepped out walking to them. Adrian sighed and walked behind her, thinking, The Ferris wheel is one of the most romantic rides here, right, Adrian? Alia laughed, winking. Yeah, definitely, he sighed. What happened? Alia whispered to Marinette. We're both just tired, Marinette smiled, lying. Well, that was the last one today anyways. See you tomorrow? Alia said, grabbing Nino's hand and leaving. We'll drive you home. Adrian said in a harsh tone. Marinette swallowed, wondering if she had done something to make him upset. They entered the car like before, and the car ride there was more awkward than before. Are you going to talk about that, Marinette? If you were hurting this entire time, why did you come? He asked, concerned. I, I didn't think it was that bad, Marinette said, looking out the car window. Adrian took hold of her shoulders and pulled her towards him, forcing her to look at him in the eyes. Marinette, I don't want you to suffer for others' happiness. You didn't think it was that bad? I barely touched you, and it hurt you enough to jump backwards. You might have a broken rib or something, Adrian said, his eyes stern with worry. I'm sorry, Marinette said. She didn't know how to exactly tell him that it was his fault for her getting hurt, though she knew she would talk to him tonight as Ladybug and tell him he needs to be more careful in battle and to keep a level head. Marinette left the car at her parents' house and walked up to her room, only to change and look at the so-called bruise in the mirror. Adrian was right. It was black and purple, though it didn't look like a regular bruise. Oh no, it was a bruise in the shape of an Akuma. What was she to do? How could she get rid of it? What did this mean? She quickly covered it up before Tiki or anyone else could see and sat down at her desk, covering her face with her hands. It was about time to transform, and she groaned just thinking about what they were going to be discussing. Ladybug zipped through Paris to find the spot where he had given her a rose and found him sitting there patiently waiting for her arrival. The pain she felt earlier wasn't there when she transformed, which was a relief, but she knew as soon as her superhero skin was shed, the pain would return. Cat, she said, sitting down beside him. Yes, my lady, he said, turning to look at her. I was hurt today, she said trying not to look at him in the eyes. Hurt? But I thought our suits were almost indestructible. Yours is. Mine, not so much. My luck keeps me safe most of the time, but we're people. We aren't invincible, Cat Noir. I'm sorry. It's my fault, isn't it? She could tell he felt terrible and leaned her head on his shoulder. You need to focus during the battle. We can't afford to make mistakes. My identity is not worth losing the fight over. 
Ladybug said softly. So, where were you hurt? He asked, leaning his head on hers for comfort. Does it matter? Ladybug said, looking up at him. He was quiet, and she knew that this could be another hint as to who she was as a civilian, but she was worried about the bruise. Mark? That was on her side. She needed to confide in her partner, her friend, her love about it. My side, she said plainly. His ears perked up and lifted his head so she would lift hers. He looked her in the eyes with surprise. Do we go to the same school? My civilian self and yours? He asked. Ladybug nodded. Are we in the same class? She nodded once again. Are you? Ladybug put her finger to his lips to stop him from talking. Remember, if you reveal to me that you know who I am as well, that we will have to give up our miraculous. Just keep it to yourself, kitty. Ladybug smiled, standing up. I'll see you soon. Ladybug winked and zipped off, leaving Cat Noir stunned. She heard a thump on her balcony and let out a smile as she curled up in a ball on her bed, closing her eyes. She felt the bed shift as she felt a body lay down next to her. She opened her eyes and smiled as she saw Cat Noir. Can I see your side again? Please, my lady? Cat said, guilt seemingly to be overwhelming him. I looked at it clearer earlier in the mirror. It isn't a bruise, Marinette said with a sigh. Cat looked at her side and lifted her shirt high enough to see the bruise clearly now. She was right. It was a black and purple Akuma-shaped bruise of some kind. He lightly ran his finger along it, seeing her face show pain. He could feel the darkness and heat resonate off of her skin, and he gave her a worried look. How bad is it? Marinette grit her teeth. Marinette sat up and looked at him in the eyes, as he didn't give her an answer. To think you're... Marinette once again stopped his words with her hand and smiled. It's all right. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. I thought it would be more dramatic, but... <laughs> she laughed awkwardly. Dramatic? You're extremely hurt, Kat said, tears starting to form. And it's my fault. I should have taken the hit. Not you. Marinette jumped towards him, pulling him close to her wrapping her arms around him in an embrace. No one should have gotten hit. This isn't your fault. This is Hogmoth's fault, not yours, Marinette said, feeling him cautiously hold her as well, avoiding her bruised area. Just as he leaned his head away from hers, a crack of thunder and lightning could be seen from above them from the balcony window. She felt Cat jump, but only smiled at him comfortingly. Wanna stay the night? Marinette said softly. Cat smiled and nodded, detransforming. Marinette blushed and turned away. Does my civilian self make you nervous? Adrian smirked. It's not like I've had the crush of the century on you since you gave me that umbrella. Marinette laughed nervously. You have? He blushed. Marinette nodded slowly and covered herself up in her blankets to hide from his vision. It's okay, Bugaboo. I liked you for a while, too, Adrian confessed, pulling the blankets over him as well. Marinette turned to face him and felt like the night couldn't get any better. I didn't get any of my designs done, Marinette sighed. It's okay. We can skip school tomorrow and finish them. We can get them done before the fashion show, Adrian smiled. Marinette hugged him tightly feeling the warmth of his skin against hers. She looked up into those emerald eyes and closed her eyes. Adrian closed his eyes and touched her lips with his and felt his cheeks burning with excitement. He was kissing Marinette. He was kissing Ladybug. This entire time, Ladybug was Marinette. How could he not see it before? But it made him twice as happy. He fell in love with her twice. He pulled her closer to him, wrapping her in his embrace, to not only comfort himself during the thunderstorm, but to also show how much he loved her. They both drifted off to sleep, 
and it seemed that Adrian wasn't as jumpy around thunderstorms as he had been in years. Maybe thunderstorms weren't something to fear like he first thought. They eliminated the roaring excitement that jumped within the clouds, just as Ladybug had illuminated the way to win any fight with her miraculous, just as he jumped around helping assist her. They were a perfect thunderstorm together. Adrian woke up feeling her still laying against him as he noticed that they were still intertwined under the blankets. While he was asleep, he had unknowingly matched her breathing and felt her rising and falling as he breathed in and out. This was nice. He took a second to just sit there and appreciate everything that had happened these last few days. He felt her shift and started to wake up and for some reason he closed his eyes to pretend to sleep just as a child would if they heard their parents coming to check on them. Marina looked down at Adrian, who seemed to be asleep and sat up. She stretched and climbed down the ladder, disappearing into the kitchen below her bedroom. Plag flew out and groaned to Adrian, knowing fully well he was awake. Come on, I'm hungry. I need my sweet, sweet camembert, Plag sighed. Tiki flew over to Plag and nudged him as she rolled her eyes. Sugar cube! Plag smiled. Ugh, stop calling me that. Never, my little sugar cube. Adrian let out a soft laugh as he sat up. Adrian looked around for Marinette, but couldn't find her, so he decided to climb down. As soon as he made her bed. It was the least he could do, after what he put her through, especially since he hurt her. Adrian, what are we going to do about that mark? Tiki asked, concerned. It looks really bad, but maybe it will heal? Adrian asked, smoothing out her blanket. Shouldn't the ladybugs have healed and restored everything? Plag asked. Well, my powers that I give her are like a double-edged knife. I give her abilities, yeah. I give her the most luck anyone has ever had. While you give Adrian the hitting power he needs to do his role, as well as the ability to get hit. You ever wonder why she got two powers while Cat Noir only got his cataclysm? Well, it's more of a passive power for you. Tiki said, sighing. Hmm, no wonder when I cataclysm myself, it didn't take long for me to start helping out again. Though, it really hurt. Adrian said, grabbing his rib as he remembered what it felt like. Yeah, well, if Ladybug ever got hit with that, I fear she wouldn't bounce back. Tiki said, averting her eyes. Well, what should we... They heard the footsteps approaching, and Adrian jumped down from her bed, now that it was made perfectly, and opened the latch for her as the footsteps got closer. Marinette popped her head around the latch and smiled, holding two cups of orange juice and some breakfast in her other hand. It was almost as if she were balancing and juggling them like the people in the circus would do. Let me help you, Adrian smiled. Seeing she was struggling not to drop them, he took the two glasses of orange juice she stashed in between her arm and her side and saw her get a little more comfortable as she adjusted her balance. Marinette sat the plates down on the side table and sat down, watching him do the same with the orange juice. I'm surprised you stayed, Marinette said, taking a bite of the bacon from off of her plate. Huh? What do you mean? We have your designs to work on. Why wouldn't I stay? Adrian said. A little confused by her statement. Mm-hmm. You usually sneak out before I wake up, kitty. She felt her cheeks blush as she gave him Cat Noir's nickname and took another bite of her breakfast. Oh, nah. I was just scared of my feelings for you because I still had feelings for Ladybug, Adrian said, feeling a little exposed. It's all right, Adrian, Marinette teased. They ate their breakfast while lightly flirting back and forth but soon to get more serious as they started working on her designs that were due that night at 5 p.m. It was currently 9.30 a.m. Adrian helped hand-stitch the best he could while Marinette sped through the machine like a pro. How did she do that? Adrian looked down at his hand-stitching and wasn't pleased with its outcome, though he pressed on, knowing that he needed to help her since it was his fault she said yes to the date. Hours of work went by when Adrian finally got the courage to ask about the elephant in the room. Your side, Adrian began, stitching as he talked. What about it? Marinette said, 
still sewing on her sewing machine, not turning her head. Is it any better? Adrian smiled as he finished his stitch and handed it to Marinette, who grabbed it from him and smiled. I don't know. I haven't looked, she said, still working on her fabric. Can we take a ten minute break? Please, Adrian pleaded, wishing she would so he could check on her. I'm almost done, though. Want to go get us some lunch while I finish this up? I may be done when you get back. Marinette smiled. Lunch? What time was it? Huh? It was already 3.45. How did time fly by so fast? Adrian nodded, jumped up on the balcony, transformed, and disappeared into the streets of Paris. A little excited about surprising her with what he was going to pick up for them to eat for lunch. Marinette continued to work on her designs, really wanting everything to turn out all right. She fantasized about winning the fashion show, getting dinner with Adrian, and ending it with Cat Noir in her room that night again, watching their favorite movie together. A little while later, Cat Noir popped in with two bags of food. Marinette smiled and held up her designs that were now fully finished and in just a nick of time. It was about 4.15 when he had returned with the food. Wow, Marinette, those look great. You're gonna win for sure, Cat said. His ears perked up with excitement as he sat their food down on the table. I'm not sure about that, but I'll try my best. Oh, what did you bring us? Marinette sat her designs down and walked over to see what he had brought. I brought us some homemade sandwiches and fries. I didn't want us to get too full since it's so late, so I could take you to dinner after the show. Marinette could still see he was nervous about their relationship, and they hadn't made it official that they were dating. She wanted to date him, but she wouldn't push the subject. She would let him ask her when he felt ready. I would love that, Cat Noir, Marinette said smiling, kissing his cheek as she passed him to sit down to eat lunch. His face turned red with a smile growing on his face as his hand touched where she had kissed. His heart fluttered as he sat down grabbing the food out of the bag and laid it out on the table. As they ate, Cat Noir's eyes kept shifting down to her side that was hurt. It bothered him. He wanted to know if it was healing or not. He wanted to make it better. He wanted her to feel better. What? Do I have something on my shirt? Marinette laughed, seeing his eyes keep drifting to a single spot. Then it clicked. Oh, you're still worried about that bruise, aren't you? Cat Noir sat his sandwich down and nodded. Marinette sighed and sat her own sandwich down and lifted her shirt for him to see. She also wanted to see if it had healed any as well. Cat Noir gasped as he looked at her side. The dark black and purple bruise from the night before wasn't there. It vanished. What? It, it's gone, Cat said, cautiously leaning to touch her side. Marinette braced for impact, but felt his soft touch. No pain. Cat looked at her worried, but then happy as he realized he wasn't hurting her by touching her side. Maybe the effects took a little longer? Marinette laughed, putting her shirt back down. <laughs> Marinette screamed. Cat Noir had jumped to his feet and picked her up hugging her, extremely happy. <laughs> you felt that guilty? Marinette asked as she pushed herself away so he would put her down. Yeah, I did. I felt terrible about getting you hurt, he confessed, letting her down. Cat Noir smiled, looking down at Marinette. He closed his eyes and wanted to lean down to kiss her, but as their lips were about to touch, Marinette heard her phone alarm begin to beep. Marinette smiled and touched his lips with her finger to stop him from kissing her, almost tempting him to want more. She grabbed her phone off the chaise that they were sitting on while eating and saw that it was her alarm. She looked at the time and gasped. It was now 4.45. They had 15 minutes to get all the way across Paris. Ah, we're gonna be late! Marinette screamed, running to her desk to grab all of her fabrics and umbrella that she designed and saw Kat smirking. What? How come you aren't freaking out? Doesn't your father expect you to be there too? Marinette said, trying to hold everything. Yeah, he does, but you have an escort. I can just take us there, princess. Kat smiled devilishly giving a wink to imply that he would carry her. Marinette grabbed a small bag and put everything into it, wrapped it around her, and walked over to Cat Noir. 
He jumped up onto the balcony, helping her up the ladder. They saw the lights of the street starting to click on as the sun began to set. Cat Noir led her to the balcony edge and lifted her up in his arms, letting her wrap her arms around his neck. Cat Noir pounced around the building tops and then made it just in time to see everyone starting to set up their designs on mannequins if they couldn't get a model. Cat Noir de-transformed and Marinette handed him her bag, smiling as he dashed off to change. As Marinette watched Adrian run off into a changing room, she felt a sharp pain shoot through her side. She grabbed her side and the pain faded a few seconds later. Are you really all right? Tiki asked, peeking out from her side purse. I'm fine, Tiki. Don't worry. Marinette laughed nervously. Adrian came back, walking proud and confident in his new attire. Marinette's face lit up bright red as the fabric and design she made fit him like a glove. She always dreamed of Adrian wearing her outfits, but felt breathless when she actually saw them on him. What do you think? Am I a good model for your designs? Adrian smiled. You're perfect. I mean, they're perfect, Marinette said, blushing while smiling. Adrian let out a laugh that made Marinette laugh as well, but a little embarrassed. Adrian wrapped his arm over Marinette's shoulder and leaned into her ear. You've got this, bugaboo. Be confident in your designs. They are perfect, Adrian chuckled. Adrian, your cat noir is showing. Marinette rolled her eyes and pushed him off of her shoulder. The judges started making their way and inspecting each contestant's designs. With each passing minute, the more nervous Marinette felt. Adrian couldn't comfort Marinette as he was the model for her designs and had a specific place to stand on stage to show it off. The only thing he could do to help her feel better is to model them the best he could. They finally made their way to Adrian Agrest featuring the designs of Marinette Du Pan Chang. He had this. He wore people's designs all the time. How was this any different? Oh, yeah. They were his love's designs. This was bad. She made him nervous. And her freaking out on the sidelines only just increased that nervousness. He swallowed, trying to mentally calm himself down. Adrian Agrest, who are you representing this evening? One of the officiants asked. I am modeling for Marinette Du Pencheng the cover designer of Jagged Stone. Adrian smiled, trying to boost her up a little in the process. Marinette threw her hands over her eyes, dreading to see how they would react to what he was wearing. Just like in her sketches, he wore the designs with pride. The judges scribbled down information and proceeded to leave to go on to the next contestant. Adrian stepped off of his section of the stage to go into another back room. Marinette watched him enter a room and followed him back there. She wanted to know what they had said. She wanted to know what they had said. She wanted to know what he said. She needed to know what happened. She opened the door and it clicked shut behind her. Turning her head, she found Adrian half dressed in the dressing room. His face was shocked and red, his shirt taken off, just barely hanging on by his arms, looking right at her. Both of their faces red and their eyes looking at one another. I, I'm so sorry. Marinette quickly turned around, covering her face with her hands. <laughs> it, it's fine. Adrian laughed nervously, finishing changing. I just wanted to know what happened, and I put a lot of work into them, but my mind at the time was a little spacey because a lot was going on with Cat Noir and Ladybug, and I got my inspiration from when we... Adrian walked over and put his hand on her shoulder. She turned around and saw him dressed in his usual clothes and smiled at him. From when we... What? Adrian asked, seeing her a little embarrassed to finish her sentence. You gave me your umbrella. That's when I fell for you. Marinette said, looking away. Adrian was speechless. She fell for him that long ago? Why is he just now seeing all the flirtations she does? And little hints that she liked him? Wait, she does like him. She confirmed that. They've been kissing and acting like they were dating when they hadn't made it official. He just assumed they were dating. But what would his father do if he started dating her? Would he allow it? Would he not let him see her anymore? Should they date in secret? He needed to have this conversation with her later. Not right now in the dressing room. They didn't say anything to me. They just simply asked who I was representing. 
They will need an hour or two to discuss the results, Adrian said, trying to hint that they could go get dinner while they waited. Adrian? Y yes he replied nervously. Wanna go get some dinner and run around on the rooftops and come back later? Marinette smiled. Adrian smiled and nodded, taking her hand into his. They were about to leave when Chloe walked over, in complete disbelief that Adrian was holding Marinette's hand, as well as getting him to represent her. Adrikins, why are you helping the bakery girl? Why didn't you represent me? Chloe whined, giving Marinette a glare. Because she asked? Adrian laughed. Chloe pouted and rolled her eyes, moving aside for them to continue to leave. They ran outside while giggling and ran into a nearby alley. Marinette watched Adrian transform and blushed. Cat Noir blushed as well, seeing her staring at him. I've never transformed in front of someone before. Cat Noir shyly smiled. You've transformed in front of me, at least. Marinette chuckled. That's different. Adrian laughed, eagerly waiting for her to transform as well. This would be the first time he would see her either transform or detransform. This would be the moment that would guarantee that Marinette was Ladybug. He could see it with his own two eyes. He knew that she was, but seeing it with your own two eyes is completely different. Marinette transformed, a burst of light enwrapping her in red and black. As she finished transforming, she looked at Cat Noir, who was smiling with his mouth open a little bit. If you aren't careful, you might not need dinner. You may catch some bugs with your mouth open like that. Ladybug laughed, pulling out her yo-yo and zipping away. Cat Noir smiled. Just watching her zip away was magical enough. He had his love and his grasp now. Everything was amazing. Nothing could possibly ruin this night. He used his staff to extend himself up to the rooftops and started chasing after her. He caught up to her shortly as she slowed down for him. Slowing down for me? What a princess. Cat Noir winked. Only because I know you couldn't catch up. Ladybug laughed, throwing her yo-yo to another distant building and leaving him behind. They both landed on the top of the Eiffel Tower, staring down at the city below as the lights reflected off of their suits. Cat Noir scooted closer his hand on top of hers. She turned toward him and smiled. Can I kiss you? Cat Noir asked, feeling like he would be shut down just because she hadn't allowed it before. Can you kiss me? Ladybug repeated while laughing. He felt a little awkward, feeling like she had rejected the idea, but was met with her pulling him towards her, inches away from her face. You know you don't have to ask, kitty. Ladybug flicked his bell as he smiled and pulled her the rest of the way to him, kissing her. A few seconds later, he leaned out and could see that even under her mask that her face was red, though he didn't say anything because he was the exact same. Would you like to get some dinner, my lady? Cat Noir stood up, his arm extending for her to take. Ladybug smiled and took his hand to stand up. With a burst of pain shooting through her, she pulled her hand away from him holding her sign as she lost her balance, falling off of the tower. She saw him yell to her in panic as she grit her teeth, everything fuzzy and disoriented. She watched as Cat Noir jumped off of the tower towards her, grabbing her as they collided. He desperately grabbed her yo-yo and swung it, letting it wrap around a nearby building. He held her around her back and they landed on the ground soon after. Ladybug was half conscious and Cat lifted her up in his arms, only to carry her into a nearby alley to avoid wandering eyes. What should he do? The bruise was gone, wasn't it? Was this a prank? She wouldn't do that to him. The hospital. Well, the hospital couldn't do anything about it. This was from an akumatized victim. There wasn't anything that they could do to help. He laid her on the ground on her back, her eyes closed. He lifted her head to sit her on his lap as he searched through her yo-yo in hopes for any answers. After a few seconds of panic searching, he gave up and held her close her hand still gripping her side. LB, what's wrong? Tell me, open your eyes. Cat cried out. Wait, was she not breathing? Cat Noir was about to give her mouth to mouth, but noticed she whispered something. He leaned closer to hear her, but a bright flash of light revealed her to say her detransformation words. Marinette now on his lap, still gripping her side in pain. 
At least now he could take a look at her side. He gently moved her hand and lifted her shirt up to see her side. It was back again, but was now starting to turn red and bubbly. This was bad. What should he do? Tiki flew out of her purse and looked at it. Quick! We need to go to the museum! Tiki pleaded, a little panicked. Before Hawk Moth feels her pain! Cat picked her up once again and headed to the museum. Without any distractions or delay, they landed inside, avoiding the alarm as it was closed. Tiki flew over to a slab of artwork on the wall and read it, looking for something. He laid Marinette on a bench nearby and walked over to Tiki. Here! Here it is! What is? Hawk Moth must have translated the text in here. It tells of how to power up your powers. Are we able to do that? Cat asked. As adults, yes. Tiki sighed. So, what do we need to do? Cat asked. When Hawk Moth akumatizes another victim, Ladybug will use the Ladybugs to fix everything again. This time, after the words Miraculous Ladybug, she will yell at the end, Cure the Darkness. Tiki said, Cure the Darkness? Yes, he used his victim she pure darkness into her body, enveloping Ladybug's miraculous light that fixes everything. That is why the Ladybugs didn't heal her. She had darkness inside of her. Tiki explained. Hawk Moth. Cat Noir clenched his fists in anger, walking back to Marinette, who was now starting to wake up. She slowly sat up and let her vision adjust from four Cat Noirs to only one. What? What happened? Marinette asked. Cat Noir gave a worried frown and kneeled down beside her, lifting her shirt up again to see her bruise. It was gone again. How could it appear and disappear like that? A distant rumble shook the building and they knew there was an Akuma. We're going to fix you right up. We need to get you home first, Cat Noir said, standing back up. Marinette grabbed his hand and he looked down at her. What is happening to me? Marinette asked, her eyes starting to water. Tiki flew over to Marinette and caressed her cheek comfortingly. Let Cat Noir take you home, Marinette, Tiki said softly. Cat Noir picked her up without any fuss from her, and they found themselves back in Marinette's bedroom. He laid her down in her bed, and she felt her phone buzz. She looked at it and shot up. Adrian, there's an Akuma. We have to go. No, he interrupted her. Marinette's excited face turned into a frown, confused as to why he said it so sternly, as if he were mad. But why? You really hurt, Marinette. You need to stay here until I can fix you. No one else can. Doctors can't help you. I need... You're miraculous. He said softly, knowing how that sounds. No, she said, blocking her earrings from him. I will give you mine in return. To hold until I get back. Cat Noir winked. Marinette looked over to Tiki, who nodded to her. Marinette sighed and took her earrings off and handed them to Adrian. Cat Noir took his ring off and detransformed. He gave the ring to Marinette and smiled. Plag went and laid down on her pillow while eating a piece of cheese. I want to go with you, Marinette said. You know you can't. I'll go fight Nakuma and fix you right up, princess, Adrian said, looking down at Marinette, seeing his reflection in her eyes. Adrian put the earrings in and transformed hoping to find the Akuma before it destroyed half of the city. They've only used each other's miraculous one other time, and he had Lady Noir to help him while he figured things out. But now, it was all on him. He left Marinette's home and zipped his way to the highest building he could find. He saw a girl wrecking havoc in the distance. It seemed as though she had the power to move things with her mind. This was bad. That means she could just look at him and hold him still. He was a sitting duck. If Ladybug were here, she would come up with an elaborate plan. What would she do? What should he do? He couldn't just give up, but he needed help. He sighed and was about to zip toward the girl but saw a black shadowy figure in the distance running towards it. What was, Lady Noir? But he made it perfectly clear that she needed to stay in bed. He threw the yo-yo and zipped his way over, trying to distract the victim. What are you doing? He yelled. Doing my job, she yelled back jumping and swiping at the victim with her staff, but it missed. You didn't listen to me. Go back, he said, running towards her, scooping her up and gliding away. He landed on a building farther away than he had planned so they could talk. Cat Noir, stop! We're a team! We need to defeat her together! 
She looked at him in her red suit that made her longing to be Ladybug once again. I don't want you to get hurt again, he said. I won't, as long as we stay focused. Now, let's go, Lady Noir said, pouncing off of the building back into battle. He sighed and just decided that it would be up to him to make everything right again. He knew the words to heal her and zipped away, ready for the fight to be over. Though they managed to finally defeat the girl that was akumatized, it took a lot out of them physically. They were out of breath and sore from the battle, but even though they were tired, they smiled through the soreness. They fist bumped one another and he captured the akuma soon after. He yelled the magical words with the addition of healing and the ladybug swarmed around Lady Noir, then disappeared. They both ran toward an alley and de-transformed together. Adrian gave Plag some cheese from inside his jacket pocket, while Marinette gave Tiki a sweet macaroon. As their Kwamis were eating their snack, Adrian gave Marinette a worried look, motioning toward her side. Marinette lifted her shirt up to reveal her side, and the black, purple-red bruise that was once there was gone. The only thing that lingered was an outline of the butterfly bruise with a soft pink outline, as if it were painted on there with pink glitter. They re-exchanged the miraculous back, and it felt good to have them in their rightful place with their current owners. I kind of like my scar. Does it make me look tough? Marinette laughed, tucking her shirt back down. Anything looks good on you, Adrian said, now serious as he grabbed her into a tight hug, resting his head on top of her shoulder. Marinette smiled and hugged him back, feeling his warmth surround her. He smelled good like a familiar perfume that came from her childhood, but couldn't quite place it. It was comforting. He wanted to keep hugging her. He didn't want to ever let go, but he had to. He released her from his grip when he heard both of their phones buzzing. Hello? Hello? They both said softly, trying not to get picked up on the other's phone call. Wait, what? We won? Marinette said in disbelief. She won? Adrian said, a smile growing as he looked at her. Wait, did she say we? But he only modeled it for her. He didn't do anything. They hung the phone up and made their way to the fashion show to claim their prize that was scheduled to be in an hour, so the people could gather and get the announcement arranged to announce their winning. Why did you say we earlier? Adrian asked. Because we made it together. You helped me stitch. You were also there supporting me all the way through as well as gave me feedback about my designs. That counts. Marinette laughed. Adrian blushed and stared at Marinette as she walked, noticing how wonderful and amazing she was. He took her hand in his, and they matched their walking together until they saw Adrian's bodyguard's car looking for him. After the announcement, would you like to actually get dinner? Adrian laughed, helping her into the car. Maybe we should drive this time instead of... She trailed off, seeing his driver looking at her. Instead of walking there and getting lost, Marinette laughed nervously. Yeah, that was my fault. He smiled nervously back. To the fashion show, please, Adrian called out, shutting the door behind him. The car stopped and Adrian got out of the car first, and then he helped Marinette out of the car. But lights were flickering in their eyes. Their eyes adjusted and saw that it was actually photographers taking pictures of them as they got out of the car. Adrian shielded Marinette's eyes from the camera's lights, and he awkwardly waved at everyone as they entered the building. They made it inside, and Adrian uncovered her eyes, feeling a little awkward as well as guilty. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? They're gonna be spreading rumors, and you're gonna get questioned about what we are, as well as get glares from girls. Adrian sighed, looking at Marinette. Adrian? What are we? Marinette? Dupen Chang? Adrian aggressed, come get on stage, hurry, a woman yelled, motioning for them to hurry. Adrian turned to look at the woman and walked towards her, while Marinette followed close behind him. They shoved them both on stage, and they accepted a ribbon for winning, as well as got an exclusive offer to eat dinner with Gabriel Agrest tomorrow night to congratulate her. They graciously accepted and left the stage. So what were you going to say? Adrian asked as he sat inside the car next to Marinette. It, it's nothing. Don't worry about it, Marinette smiled, feeling a little upset about it. Did he not want to be her boyfriend? They've kissed for goodness sakes. He has told her a million times as Cat Noir that he was in love with her. Why has he not asked her yet? Um, well, where do you want to eat dinner? Adrian smiled, but Marinette kept quiet. 
Come on, princess. What's wrong? Adrian reached over and put his hand on top of hers that rested on the car seat between them. Um, well, want to eat some pasta? Marinette said, unsure how to respond to his second question, so she decided to answer the first one. Pasta? Adrian repeated. Yeah, I heard the restaurant near the Eiffel Tower is really good. Marinette smiled, trying to hide her worried thoughts. Adrian stared at her, knowing she was hiding something from him, but he decided not to push the issue. She was Ladybug after all. She would come to him when she was ready to talk about things. Will you drop us off at where Marinette said? Adrian called out to his bodyguard. The guy driving looked back at him and nodded, remaining silent. The car drove up to the restaurant and Adrian helped Marinette out of the car, shutting the door behind her. After you, Adrian smiled. Such a gentleman. Can't believe you almost convinced me you were an alley cat. Marinette laughed. Adrian smiled bigger, knowing she was talking about his alter ego and blushed from the thought of how he acted around her. They were seated at a table near the back. Special request from Adrian, due to the fact that the girls from the fashion show knew they left and were more than likely looking for him to get a photo or an autograph. Marinette picked up her menu and started looking over the items when she heard him speak. Uh, Marinette? Yes? What, um, what do you want to drink? Adrian laughed nervously. Um, maybe a water? Marinette said, shrugging. Nice choice. Um, if you're only choosing water to try and make this cheaper, don't worry about the price, he said sheepishly. It's not about money, Adrian. I don't like you for... I've never liked you for your money. Marinette stepped in. Adrian swallowed, wondering if he offended her. Yeah, you're right. He smiled awkwardly. Why was this so difficult? It was easier when he was Cat Noir. But he couldn't depend and hide behind his mask the rest of his life. He needed to step up and be brave all on his own. Marinette? Uh, yeah? She said once again. I heard there's gonna be another thunderstorm tonight. Adrian smiled. Really? I heard it was supposed to be clear as crystal, clear enough to watch the stars, Marinette said, smirking as she saw that he didn't notice her teasing. She hid her face behind the menu and went quiet as she waited for him to respond. Are you teasing me, my lady? Adrian said, leaning forward. Not at all, kitty. Marinette smiled over the menu, only showing him her eyes. So are you feline like hanging out tonight? A perfect way to end the night would be to watch the last episode of our show. Adrian blushed again, feeling insecure about using his cat jokes without the mask. After we discuss the real issue, Marinette put the menu down, now a little more serious. This was it. This is what she was upset about earlier in the car. He just knew it. Adrian, what are we? Marinette asked fiddling with her fingers. What are we? What do you mean? Adrian asked, confused. Like, we're partners, yeah. We've kissed <laughs> a lot. We're friends. Friends? I mean, yeah, but don't you want to be more? He asked, concerned. That's what I'm confused about. Don't you want to be more? Marinette said, looking away. I do. Her eyes blinked and turned back to him and surprised at him for being so upfront about it. Like, do you want to? She began. I assumed we were. I guess I should be a little more traditional, my lady. Adrian smirked. Marinette shook her head in embarrassment and her face lit up bright red. No, no, it's fine. I just got the wrong idea or something. I guess I'm just a little slow. Will you be my girlfriend? Adrian interrupted her. Not only was her face red now, but her ears as well. She felt like she couldn't breathe. Marinette, are you all right? Yeah, yes Yes to being my girlfriend? Or yes to being all right? He smirked, knowingly teasing her back. St stop And yes, to both. Marinette squeaked using her menu to hide her face. Fine, 
I won't tease you anymore. Tonight. Adrian smiled. Marinette put her menu down to reveal her face, which was still bright pink. His face was also flushed, but he didn't want to hide his feelings. He wanted her to see that he was blushing with her. He wanted her to see that he was not hiding behind a mask. There are some complications to dating me, though, Adrian said, a little more serious now. Complications? My father. I'm not sure how he will react to me dating someone. I'm the brand face for his designs and advertising, and a lot of the sales are young girls, he said, rubbing the back of his neck. Oh. Oh? That's it? What was she thinking? That was her only reaction? What did O oh even mean? You will also have rumors spread about you, as well as get caught by paparazzi, and get glares from all the girls in Paris, and... Are you trying to scare me away, Adrian Agrest? Marinette asked, teasing. No, no, I just wanted you to know what you're getting yourself into when dating me. He stopped when he noticed her smiling with a slight smirk. She was teasing him. That's not fair. I agreed not to tease you. I didn't agree not to do it, Marinette laughed. He let out a breath, smiling at her as she laughed. The waiter brought their drinks, as well as their food that Adrian had ordered for them, knowing that she wouldn't be able to due to their nerve-wracking conversation. What? You ordered for us? Marinette said, looking down at her plate of food. I wanted to surprise you? Adrian shrugged with a smile. Marinette looked down at her plate and began to eat as she felt a little self-conscious about every little thing she did. Was she eating too weird? Would she spill her drink on herself? She was always clumsy, but she didn't want to mess this up. For once, she tried her hardest to act like her regular self and enjoyed the dinner date with her boyfriend. Adrian dropped Marinette off at her home, and he went back to his own. Marinette laid on her bed and got a text. She opened the text and saw it was from Adrian. Be there soon. I'm on my way, princess. <laughs>